O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. May 21st, a reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, beginning at the first verse. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence, own presence with the glory that I, pres that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know that in truth I came for you. And they have believed me that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine and yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in, in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This Sunday is not Memorial Day weekend, but I thought I would speak a little bit about Memorial Day since we are approaching that next Sunday, which will be the Sunday immediately before Memorial Day, is the Feast of Pentecost. And so our sermon will necessarily have to do with the giving of the Holy Spirit upon the church. But as we approach Memorial Day, I cannot help but reflect on the holiday's original significance and how it seems to have been lost in America's celebration of the weekend. While its observance dates back to the Civil War, that is our most traumatic period of loss and division, the holiday has now become synonymous with barbecues, parades, car sales, and the onset of summertime fashion rules. As someone who spent years at Oxford University, I was continually reminded of the university's war dead. The names of those who died in the First World War, as well as the conflicts that followed, are etched all over the corridors of the centuries-old university and what was not uncommon for a friend to share the name of an ancestor whose name was listed on these walls. Monuments take on new meanings when one ceases to see them as significant of history and begins to see the names and faces of friends. It is clear that the desire for glory characterizes both the generation of 1914 and 2014. While today's conceptions of glory and, sorry, 2023, while today's conceptions of glory and heroism may be different, they are similar in nature. Both are often taken in by the glory of idealism, whether we call it empire or democracy. Those who fight in wars understand that real heroism has more to do with endurance, loyalty, and the daily struggle to retain integrity and humanity in the midst of unspeakable and awful conditions. Glory needs to become more prosaic and have more to do with the daily giving up of fantasy and illusion for the sake of one another and a common cause. As a Christian, I am reminded that from the very beginning of the Christian faith, glory has been redefined. Instead of being a reputation won by aggression and success, glory has been understood as that radiance of truth that can shine out in the middle of suffering and even of failure. Glory has been understood to be bound up 
with the integrity of God and God's human creatures. Glory is for the Christian shown in the cross of Jesus Christ, where the integrity of unconditional love blazes out in the midst of a situation as horrific as that of the trenches of the First World War. By recognizing human wholeness and our common life, we consciously unite ourselves with those who have gone before, including the war dead. The Christian life is not confined to this world, and so in prayer we are joined by a great cloud of witnesses who intercede for us as we intercede for them. This cloud includes those most wounded by the world, including those who were killed in battle. They serve as witnesses to the depravity of the world and the need for the healing and glory that can only come with God's kingdom. In conclusion, Memorial Day is a time to remember those who gave their lives for their country. But in America, it has lost much of its original significance. We need to redefine what glory means and recognize the human wholeness at the center of the Christian life. So we can unite ourselves with those who have gone before us, including those who have died and have paid the ultimate sacrifice. They serve as witnesses to the fallenness of the world and the need for the healing of God that the glory of his kingdom provides. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the dead of sin by your life-giving Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.